So I drain from the mid port a little bit just to kind of, like I said, to, uh, to melt it, dissolve it a little bit. I'm most concerned about that peanut brittle. All right, so yeah, most of the chocolate is melted. Really all I see is the uh, peanut butter. There we go, 20 minutes. sit on that for 10 days and take a taste and go from there. So um, 8.0% Butterfinger Stout, um, 20 IBUs, roughly 38, maybe 40 SRM. Um, it looks very dark uh, at the moment, but as you you know kind of get towards the bottom of the glass, it's a little more towards the brown side. Um, so in the future, I'd probably bump up the uh, roasted malts just a touch. Um, but yeah, anyways, uh, let's see, kind of like a slightly darker than tan head. I don't know why the hell it's focused on my beard. There we go. Anyways, let's go for the aroma. So definitely a little bit of uh, peanut butter up front. A um, little bit of milk chocolate. Kind of smells like Easter candy. <laughs> kind of like when you unwrap like a shitty Easter candy that's got foil on it. Um, maybe a little bit of like uh, dark chocolate too, like maybe bittersweet, semi-sweet morsels, like those uh, kind of um, those little chocolate chips that you use in baking. And that's about it. Pretty uh, straightforward aroma. Um, does smell a little bit sweet. Um, it is a big beer with not many IBUs, so it does kind of come across uh, a little bit sweet. Wow. 
uh, quite thick for sure. Um, I think the finishing gravity was like 1018, 1019 with this. I'm not exact. Um, I'd have, you know, I'm sure those are in the notes, obviously. Well, they're definitely in the notes, but. So it is a pretty big beer. Um, maybe a little bit of peanut butter in the, the, the flavor, but it's, I gotta be honest, it's like mostly like just layers of chocolate, lots of milk chocolate. Um, again, semi sweet, dark chocolate. Maybe a little bit of those oats come through. But very good, that's for sure. I really do like this beer. Oh, I hope you're picking that up. There's a church down the street with a... Uh... Oh, I hope that's picked up. That's a... If so, that would be awesome. <laughs> it's got like a melody to the bell. Anyways, I won't let it disrupt me. Yeah, but very uh, velvety on the mouthfeel. Super thick, chocolatey. This is only my fourth stout, so I'm very um, happy with the result. This is by far my, my best. Um, the I would say kind of the pH um, and the water profile in, in my previous ones were a little um, lacking. I didn't really put as much time and effort to them as I have my recent beers, um, or my recent stouts, I should say, is particularly this one. Um, like I tried something for the first time with this beer and it ended up amazing. Like, um, normally I don't add all my salts to the mash <clears throat> and I did this time as an experiment and it, it just turned out amazing. So I'm kind of doing that going forward since I don't sparge. Um, I wish I did, but if I did every single batch would have to be a 10 gallon batch, um, which I'm not going to go into that now, but so yeah. Super, super big beer, chewy as fuck, like viscous. You can tell it's a big beer, but it doesn't come across boozy. Um, it does uh, have a little bit of a, a boozy smell when it warms up, which I mean, it, it is an imperial stout, so I mean, it's kind of hard to hide that to be honest. But yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know really what else to say about it, to be honest. Oh, um, oh yeah, that's a, all right. That's actually pretty important. Um, so without the Butterfinger additions, um, it would have been a six point nine percent beer. Uh, I added a half pound in the boil, which ended up being point uh, two percent ABV, and then post fermentation, I added uh, two pounds, which ended up being point nine ABV. Uh, that's kind of where I would somewhat change things going in the future. Um, I'm not sure how, but it did, like, that's where, like, kind of the booziness uh, showed itself. Before I did the secondary fermentation, there was no booziness detectable whatsoever. So, I don't know. I would probably think twice about doing it the same way. Um, also, the temperature, uh, I, I basically treated it like I was adding fruit to the beer, um, just to let it ferment out, uh, which I don't know if that's the right approach with... Uh, adding two pounds of Butterfinger uh, post-fermentation. But, you know, uh, the end result was, you know, I'm very, very happy with it. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but transferring the beer was a fucking nightmare. Um, the midport kept getting clogged from the peanut brittle in the Butterfinger. I just would not uh, drop out. It just would not drop to the bottom of the conical whatsoever. Um, even in the keg, it took a long time before I stopped seeing like bits of Butterfinger uh, peanut butter in the in the actual pint glass. So um, that's something to keep in mind. But yeah, I don't know really what else to say about this beer other than it's really really big, super delicious. Um, very happy with the beer. Uh, it's actually also the biggest beer I've ever brewed. Before this, it was like maybe seven point eight, so it's not much larger than that. But why does it keep focusing on my beard? Anyways, um, yeah, so I'm gonna leave it there. I'm sure I'll think of things later to talk about, but. I just kinda wanna put an end to this beer. I've been uh, letting it 
uh, condition for as long as I can hold off because uh, it is such a big beer and it needs some time. And I think we're at like maybe like a month and a half at this point. But anyways, I will shut up. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do appreciate it. No amount.